All right, well, now we're in an entirely new chapter. And I gotta say, after working through all the problems in this chapter, I'm very excited to talk about these with y'all. This is probably one of my favorite chapters and just how well things came together. And it really puts things into perspective of how fields, charges, and currents all work together. So, yeah, let's go ahead and dive in for our first question. The statement reads, calculate the power, energy per unit time, transport it down the cables of example 7.13 and problem 7.62. I'll include a picture. Assuming that the two conductors are held at a potential difference V and carry current I. Down one and back up the other. All right. And then um, let's go ahead and look. We have here for the cable situation. Uh, say we've seen this before last uh, chapter. But we see that we have current going down one way and back another at radius A and B. And then we have the sheet separated by distance H with magnetic field inside. Um, so if we're, um, so to find what the, uh, magnetic field or not the magnetic field to find out what the energy is, what we need to know is the pointing vector and the pointing theorem, which we'll talk about soon, uh, which is S is equal to one over mu naught E cross B. Okay. So we know that E and B are perpendicular to one another. So of course we can take their cross product and find another perpendicular vector. And this is what the uh, vector is. Then the electric and magnetic fields for the coaxial system are these, and the electric and magnetic fields for the ribbon are those. All right. So let's go ahead and take the cross product. We have S is equal to one over mu naught. Um, and we see that the mu naughts cancel in the cross product with E and B. Uh, you see that we have a common factor here of two pi, so that's a square. We can factor out an S. The, or, excuse me, we can factor out the epsilon. We have two S's, so that's an S squared, and the lambda from the E field, the I from the B field, and then we're left with the cross product to S hat cross phi hat, which in cylindrical we know goes to Z hat. All right? And so this is what's known as the energy uh, density. Okay, so what we have to do to find the power or energy density per unit time. So we have to do to find the powers, take the surface integral of this thing. Uh, and so density requires an integration. So let's go ahead and integrate over the surface of what we're curious about. In this case, uh, pointing down to Z, we're interested in zero to two pi, okay? Um, and then our radius from A to B, so between the cylinders. Okay, so with that, we know our DA is S, D, S, D, phi, Z hat, pretty easy. Uh, we see that the S is a factor of S cancels. The uh, dot product, uh, Z dot Z, cancels to 1. Um, we see that lambda I over 2 pi squared epsilon is a constant, so run them all through. Fabini allows us to split the integrals. Do that, we get 0 to 2 pi gives us 2 pi. And then 1 over S, A to B gives us LN, evaluated from A to B. Factors of 2 pi cancel. And we see that the natural log of B over A uh, is from the S integral. And now what we need to do is recall that the potential is V equal E dot DL. The reason why we do this is uh, we get the uh, same natural log uh, lambda over two pi epsilon as we do in the power um, uh, formulation. So what we can say is that power is equal to IV, which is what we proved back in chapter seven. All right, so now we get to see how it comes together once again. Staying consistent, we like it. And then for the ribbon, the pointing vector is, okay, plug in the E and B fields again. Uh, Z cross X, again, a little bit backwards, but this gives us Y hat. Um, remember how the order moves it, so be careful of that. Um, and then so, again, find the integral, surface integral. And this time we're running from 0 to H and 0 to uh, W inside. Again, this is in the Y hat direction. So run it through. Let the integrals can or do their thing, split them up. We see that we get an H and a W. The W's cancel, so we're left with uh, sigma IH over epsilon. But recall that the potential for this situation is E dot DL, excuse me, which is running from 0 to H DZ. So that gives us sigma H over epsilon. Same thing here. We get P equal IV. So that is wonderful to see. And we're done with our first question.